For this part, we consider nested rational expressions. Other words, how do we clean up when fractions are inside of fractions? Now, as usual, we're going to get our guidance from what we do with rational numbers. The big issues are going to be dealing with polynomials and factoring. Now, for a checklist, okay, what we'll do, we'll have inside denominators and an outside denominator. We want to focus on the inside denominators. So for those, we want to find the least common denominator. The goal is to clear all the inside denominators. So once we have that, we can either think of it as distributing or just multiplying all terms by the LCD over 1. Once we've done that, all the denominators should clear. Then it's our usual combine, factor, simplify if possible. Now, example, let's try 1 over x minus y over x squared, and then that's over 1 over y minus x over y squared. We look at all the inside denominators. So we'll have x, x squared, y, y squared, they roll up to x squared, y squared for an LCD. And then we're just going to multiply by x squared, y squared over 1 over itself. Now note, I'm going to put our original numerator and denominator into parentheses so that we distribute correctly. Or you could think of it as all terms that show up in the fraction pick up one of these terms. So we multiply through. Then all these denominators should clear, and so what we'll get here is xy squared minus y cubed over x squared y minus x cubed. We can factor out greatest common factors, so that's going to give me a y squared over an x squared, and then next to that's going to be an x minus y, y minus x. Then recall, if we have something of this form, so an a minus b over a b minus a, they're in the wrong order in one part, that's just going to go to a minus 1. So here we'll get a minus y squared over x squared. Next example, let's try 1 over x plus 3 minus 1 over x, whole thing over 3. Now here we don't have a fraction in the denominator. Is that going to be a problem? No. Our options are, if I want a fraction down here, I could just turn it into 3 over 1, proceed as before. Or we note, the whole reason for putting our LCD over 1 is to keep fractions lined up. But I don't have to keep it over a 1 if I don't need it. So that's the way we'll go here. Now we note, the LCD, the inner fractions, we're going to have an x, x plus 3. We multiply by x, x plus 3 over 1, over itself. But since I'm only going to hit 3, I'm just going to leave it as x, x plus 3, not over a 1. We distribute in the numerator. Noted we've put parentheses around the original numerator. And so what we're going to get when the denominators clear out, I'll have x minus quantity x plus 3 over 3x, x plus 3. Now, we need to distribute the minus sign in the numerator. That's going to give us an x minus x, so the x's go away. And then I got a minus 3 left over. The minus 3 cancels with the 3 to leave me with minus 1 over x, x plus 3. Similar example. Let's try. Okay, so here, what do we have? 2 over x minus 2 plus 1 whole thing over 2x plus 2 minus 1. Now, we've got mixed terms here. We've got part fraction and then whole number adding together. Same idea as with the previous example. We just use LCD or LCD over 1 where it works better. But they're equal, so no problem. Here the LCD is going to be x minus 2x plus 2. So I multiply by x minus 2, x plus 2 over 1, over itself. Parentheses around both the numerator and denominator now, and then we distribute. So when we hit the 1 and the minus 1, I could just leave the denominator out. We're going to get rid of that 1. When the denominator is clear on the other terms, we'll be left with 2 times x plus 2, 
plus x minus 2, x plus 2. You'll note here, we can either just expand it out and then simplify, but I've got x plus 2 in each term, so I could just factor that out. And that's a little bit cleaner and quicker. Now, what that'll leave behind, we'll have a 2 and an x minus 2. The 2 and the minus 2 go away, and I'm just left with an x factor. So the numerator is going to go to x, x plus 2. Same thing in the denominator. We could bring out the x minus 2. We need to be careful here. That's going to leave me with 2 minus and then parentheses x plus 2, which is going to go to a minus x minus 2. Again, the 2s go, but now I'm left with a minus x. So the x's are going to cancel, and then we're going to be left with, okay, I'll distribute the minus 1 through the numerator, minus x minus 2 over x minus 2. Then that's same situation as before. Final example, negative exponents can introduce fractions inside of fractions. For instance, if we take 1 minus 9x to the minus 2 over 1 minus 5x to the minus 1 plus 6x to the minus 2. Doesn't look like fractions inside of fractions, but if we rewrite the negative exponents, for instance, x to the minus 2 is 1 over x squared, x to the minus 1 is 1 over x, that becomes fractions inside of fractions. If we rewrite, we could deal with it as with the previous examples, but there's a little bit cleaner way. So what we'll note is if we multiply x to the minus 2 by x squared, okay, we sum the exponents, x to the 0 is 1, and if I multiply x squared by x to the minus 1, exponent now is 1, x to the 1 is just x. So what we'll do, I'll multiply x squared over x squared. We'll distribute as before. We'll assume that we have parentheses around numerator and denominator. And then what's going to come out, noting these rules, I'll have x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. These factor, okay, the numerator is a difference of two squares. We can cancel the x minus 3 terms, and then that'll leave us with x plus 3 over x minus 2.